Hello, everyone. This is Robin Duncan, and I'm here for Miracles for Living. This is our first live event, and I'm so excited to be here to share some of the tools that can help people to release trauma and the effects of PTSD. And today is our first live broadcast, so I hope you found your way here. Uh, if you have, go ahead and chat or say something there on the side and let me know that you have found our program. I am here with my friend, Dr. Tim Ryan, and he is a therapist as well. And one of the things that I love to hold in my heart is helping healers help others. So today we are here with Tim, my dear friend, and he has been through a lot. And I would love for Tim to take a couple of minutes and tell us a little bit about himself and his background. And he's joining me by phone, so you'll be able to hear his voice. Go ahead, Tim. Hi, Robin. Hi, everyone. Um, and I'm very grateful to be here myself and my background. I, uh, professionally, I have a doctorate in clinical psych, a doctorate in divinity, master's in psychology, and I have been a therapist for about oh goodness, 40 years or so. And I think I was a therapist as a kid too for my two alcoholic parents and uh, and all the craziness I went through. So um, by way of introduction, I, I have been mostly healthy. About two months ago, I started falling down. Just unexpectedly, plagues would go numb or collapse a buckle and so uh it was finally diagnosed as spinal stenosis which is a deterioration of the spine it's actually the vertebrae starts collapsing and uh long-term uh abuse they said uh, a long-term deterioration and i guess it just finally gave out so that's where i am right now with my structure now last session uh, i had a session with uh, robin and it was a beautiful session with uh, God's body shop and healing and structural reintegration. And I was very grateful for that um, uh, meditation tapping. And uh, I noticed my, my limbs seemed stronger. And I actually, for the first time, could go outside without falling down. I have a cane that I use now. Wow. But it was, it was a wonderful uh, affirmation of the work of spiritual healing and, and uh, God's mind being our mind. And, and there is no lack, so to speak. So uh, I'm grateful for that. And I'd like to continue. All right, Tim. Well, you and I have talked before and you've shared with me that you've had so many experiences in childhood that you may or may not have processed at this point. I know you've done lots of different things and used many different healing modalities. And, you know, one thing I find is that um, there's nothing greater than prayer. And I know you are a fellow student of A Course in Miracles, just as I am. And when we put together prayer and the principles of A Course in Miracles, and we add in some of the EFT to help get rid of that anxiety in the body, that it is a very powerful combination for healing. So today we are going to do a little bit of that with you, Tim. And uh, if you could just take a moment with me today, our topic is on freedom from trauma. So if you can think for a moment of you mentioned there were times with your mom specifically, and I guess you said both of your parents are now in That's spirit. Right. Is that right? Right. Correct. Right. So, you know, correct. healing needs to happen, whether people are here in the physical or in spirit. So we both know that, that grievances can go with us. So we want to make sure that we are addressing all of our grievances and we're able to leave those behind. That frees not only us, but those that are either in the body or in spirit, because we know that healing is of the mind and that healing is what um, what we're all here to do and of course in miracles it says that this is what the world is for is the healing of the mind of the Son of God so that's what we're here to do 
And Holy Spirit, we thank you today that you would guide me and Tim and everyone listening. That is, if there is some area in anyone's life that is listening, that they could release today and forgive and leave behind, that you would guide them in doing this. And we are so excited to offer you this time to be used for the highest and most holy purpose of healing and relief and freedom. Amen. Amen. All right, Tim, if you uh, will go ahead and go kind of quickly so we can cover a lot in our hour together. But as you think about your childhood and specifically your mom, and we've talked about a couple of other situations you've been in, but one we're going to we're going to dive right into a difficult time. And the one that occurs to me is when you said that your mother was actually cutting herself. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, not only did she drink and pass out, but she also had a habit of, I think she wanted to die. I think she had a, uh, she tried many times, but she would uh, like to cut on herself. And I would find her, of course, collapsed and pass out in the bathroom with, you know, pools of blood. So, um, which was horrifying to me. And I think I disassociated, but, um, and um, uh, so that was a, a um, um, not every day, but uh, it occurred enough that I was very worried and concerned about her and wanted her to be okay. And I think more and more I gave up myself and how can a little kid fix a mom? So uh, this is this is ongoing from, I guess, about age uh, six, seven, eight. I, I had a year and a half away from my mom where my parents got in a brutal battle and uh, busted lamps and threw things at each other. And, and wh noses. where did you go at that point? I, I went to live with my, my, I was six and my sister was three and uh, my mom, she was all banged up, but she had enough to get us on a bus, a Greyhound going to, um, going to Florida South about three, four hours uh, to live with my grandparents, which I think was redemptive because of all the nature there. And, um, did that feel uh, like a safe place for you? It, it did. After I settled in a little bit, it did. There was lots of nature, and my grandfather was a very loving man. He mm. picked me fishing and hunting and stuff So like you that. had about a year and a half reprieve, and then you yes. dropped right back into that old situation? Mother had gotten remarried and brought the new father down and uh, picked us up. Mm. And then we drove back to uh, D.C., what was your feeling as you were driving back home again? What were you thinking uh, about? Do you remember? Uh, anxiety. I think it was anxiety. Mm -hmm. And um, the first thing when we got back, I think they had just rented a new place. And my, I, I know these things pop in your mind. I, uh, my mom found some baby rats in the closet and she had me kill him and I didn't want to but she screamed at me to kill these rats and I was crying the whole time I did it so it's just a lot of little memories. that is a lot Tim you know and every yeah. time I talk with you you tell me about a different one that I mean it just tells me how many there are and you know I feel like each one that feels significant to you needs to be addressed and one thing that happens is when we are traumatized and we have the feeling that comes up. I mean, even being asked to kill these baby rats, you know, for a child, mm -hmm. that's tragic. That you know, a rat can be a family yeah. pet, right? We used to have yes, mice and, you know, it can be really fun to have rats or mice as pets. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you're being asked to kill these babies and the feeling that comes up can be so traumatizing. And I call it your emotional vault, which is that place where you store all of the fear and the terror about things. And it's almost right. like we open the door and we put that trauma inside and then we close the door and then it never really gets processed. And then the vault gets full. And I think mm -hmm. that might be what's going on with your spine. And for those that might be just joining in right now that, uh, Tim had mentioned earlier that his spine is now deteriorate, deteriorating a bit. And I feel like his spine is trying to carry all of these old feelings and emotions. And we are learning that we have tools and we have divine help to help us to release and let go of these old emotional hurts. So today, as we look at this, when you think about that 
journey of leaving, coming back again, and then being asked to kill the rats. We'll just narrow in on those few things right now. But which one of those is most significant in your mind that really troubled you? Um, honestly, the killing of those baby rats. I thought so. Traumatic. Yeah. For a child, uh, especially, that's just, that's a tall request to say, I want you to mm-hmm. end these babies. Right. So all let's right. go ahead and tune into that moment. And, uh, we don't need to go into all the graphics of how that occurred, unless that's something you need to share that would help to move it. Mm. But as you are getting ready to do this, if you gave me one word to describe how you felt, it might be terrified, it might be devastated. What is that word that would describe this moment right before you have to do this deed? I, I, you know, honestly, I think it was anger. I was angry at my mom and angry at myself and um, and um, just hated my life having to do that. I think it was about eight, eight or nine at that time. So, um, and where do you feel that anger? If you just tune uh, into it in your body, back. In, in your back, back, there it is, right? It's been stored there quite a while. And mm-hmm. if you gave that a number between mm-hmm. one and 10, with 10 being very, very intense, what number would you give it today just thinking about it? Mm. <sighs> right now, at this moment, um, let's see, one to 10, uh, about a plus six. Plus so six. it's still pretty high. And this happened, what did you uh, say, around seven or eight years old? Or yeah, do you eight, know the eight, age? Eight, 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 right. Uh, eight, but yeah. for everyone listening, you can see that even though this happened so many years ago, around eight years old, it's still firing as if it happened this morning. You know, a, a, a plus seven or eight is really high and it can really get in in your way of your current life. So that's what we want to address today. So there's that anger and the feelings being in your spine. And the other one was helpless, Robin. Anger and helplessness. Overwhelming helplessness. Um, Not able to, um, you know, honor myself, I guess, my love for every living being. Right. um, So if we tune into that anger and helplessness, you know, our goal is to bring down that seven or eight charge and bring it down ideally to a zero. And all we're doing here today is taking a shot at that with the help of of God and via the Holy Spirit that we would be able to have uh, some relief for Tim today. Anyone that's listening in with us right now, if you could just say a quick little prayer for Tim and just see him free of this whole experience, because that would be hard hard on anyone's heart, much less that of an eight year old. So thank you all for this. Sure. Yeah. And so I'm just dipping into it, getting into seeing that image. And I also had fear of my mother's anger, which was a continuation for the rest of my life. Fear of her anger because she would get violently rageful. Right. And And if you um, didn't do what she asked, I guess that would not go well at all, right? Right. Exactly. She stood me up many a night, you know, raging at me. All right. Against the wall. As we tune into that feeling in the body, what I like to do is give it that one word, which he said is anger and also help feeling helpless about the situation. But go ahead and finish this sentence for me, Tim. Go ahead and say, uh, I can't let go of this anger because, and just let your heart talk to me. I can't let go of that anger because. Um, One thought comes, I don't want to hurt anyone. And uh, it will really hurt to hurt someone because. Uh, it's so violent. And I have to hurt this these ones because. Because mm, that's what anger is. It hurts people. Right. But I, time, I have to I do this it. deed because, and all I'm doing is getting your words for it. So right. I have to kill these babies because. I'm afraid of my mom's anger. Okay. And of course, uh, sometimes it will sound like I'm asking you the obvious, but really I'm just getting a hold of your words because your words are what are tied into the feelings in your emotional vault. And that's what we're after today. You know, as I work with people online or even in person, I always try to make it a teaching moment as well. So as we're working, if Tim is, doesn't mind, what, what I'm doing is kind of explaining what we're doing as we're going along because my joy would be that people could use these tools at home or learn those tools at a higher level to be able to use them as a practitioner. So Tim, you were about to say something. Uh, No, no, thank you. Thank you. 
That's okay. Great. Well, let's go ahead. Now we're going to do a quick prayer of turning this over to God. And then we're going to do a little EFT, which stands for emotional freedom techniques. And we're going to use some tapping points on the body. They're much like the same points for acupressure, acupuncture, but they're located closer to the surface of the skin. So you can actually just use your fingertips and we're going to be tapping on the body. And I will be guiding Tim through a little exercise to release the anxiety that he felt at eight years old that is still being felt today as an adult. And our goal is to bring that charge down and to allow his heart to have a voice and tell us you know, anything that's coming up as we talk, sometimes we'll go through a tapping round, a prayer tapping round. And sometimes the mind will bring up other pictures, other situations. Maybe there's one right behind that that's even bigger and now it's right there. So Tim, be sure to stop me if something else occurs to you and let's yes. interrupt the process and let's make sure to stay on point with whatever is coming up for you at the time, because it's kind of like peeling an onion and each layer as it comes off, sometimes it can bring up something that's really the problem that is right there waiting to be addressed. Yes. Sound okay? Deeper, yeah, deeper levels, Robin, these feelings keep coming up. I just guilt and worthlessness. Guilt and worthlessness. Okay. Yeah, that I'm not worthy of anything because uh, I'm such a bad person. And you feel like you're a bad person because... Yeah. Uh, killing these mice, these okay. horrible babies. And, uh, Do you see, I mean, Tim, thank you so much for sharing these rough moments of your life. And I know it's not easy for any of us, much less to have to do something like that at someone else's command, or even to hear someone else that had to go through this. But you see what happens is we come away feeling guilty and then we feel unworthy. And then every time something starts to go well in our lives as an adult, we actually right. stop that momentum because it doesn't match our thought that we are unworthy. And then here comes this good thing. And so there's a screeching halt, like a spine that starts to act up right in the middle of everything. And what we want to do is get right back on track with our worthiness because God mm. created you, Tim, as worthy, right? Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, let's get right to work. And first of all, we will start with our prayer. And dear God, we come to you today on behalf of our brother, Tim. And I love him so much. And I really want him to be free of all of these old experiences, the memories, the images that he could turn this over to you today and wholly forgive himself and know that he did the very best that he knew how in reacting to this situation and that he could give it to you so it could be healed in his heart now and forever. And we thank you for everyone joining in that they would join in our prayer of release for Tim. And if anyone here has gone through something similar that you would free yourself along with us. Thank you God for the highest and happiest outcome, amen. Amen. All right, let's go to work with our EFT. I love to integrate those principles of A Course in Miracles right into the healing process. And I also bring in little tools. I know some people will say, well, why do you use EFT? Because you're not a body and all the things that go with A Course in Miracles. But until we know ourselves as not a body, that we know ourselves as eternal spirit, sometimes we'll use little tools that help us along the way. We also get dressed every day. We eat food every day. We do lots of things to take care of this body that in truth does not exist. So we'll go ahead and use some of these tools to help us to turn our attention to the Holy Spirit where everything can get better. Let's go ahead now and let's tap over the heart. And I'm tapping right here at the top of the heart, right below the collarbone and the top of the heart. There's an area in the middle. We're going to tap in a little circle. That's what I like to do. And Tim, I'll have you go ahead and repeat after me and remember to edit anything that you need to along the way, okay? Okay. All right. So let's begin with, there was a time. There was a time. When I was about eight. When I was about eight. And I was requested. And I was demanded. <laughs> I was demanded to kill these baby rats. To kill these baby rats in the it, closet. It was unthinkable. It was unthinkable. And yet I had to do it. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> I had to do it. 
I release all the pressure. I release all the pressure. Of having to do it. Of having to do it. If I didn't do it. If I didn't do it. It would have been worse. It would have been worse. Let's go to the other side of the chest. I release all the fear. I release all the fear. And all the anger. Yelling. All the anger. And all the feelings of helplessness. And all the feelings of helplessness. I had to do it. I had to do it. I didn't know how to stop it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't know how to stop it. I didn't know a way out. I didn't know a way out. And I felt so bad about it. And I felt so bad. Let's bring prayer right into no the middle of the chest and just say, Dear God. Dear God. Take this from me. Take this from me. This terrible experience. This terrible experience. I want peace instead of this. I choose peace instead of this. I think I might have decided. I think I might have decided. That I was guilty. That I was guilty. And unworthy. And unworthy. And I might still be holding on to this. And I might be still holding on to some of this. And I am determined to see this differently. And I am determined to see this differently. Let's just pause and take a breath. You know, when it's something big like this, we don't want to do long tapping rounds. It's just too much. So just taking another breath, Tim, and just send that energy just out of your body. Just all those feelings of being right there in that moment and having to deal with this and knowing this was in front of you to do and being eight and feeling like this demand was on you. And if you did not do it, that the ramifications would have been so severe. So I want you to just imagine right now, will you forgive yourself, Tim? I forgive you completely. Mm. And we know that Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, we know everyone here, we forgive you in advance for uh, what you had to do that was in front of you to do. And would you be willing to forgive yourself? Yes, and I forgive that eight-year-old boy. Right. If I was eight and I had to do this, would you forgive me? Yes, of course. Right? Of course. So if you of would course. forgive me, then we can certainly forgive you, right? Right. All right. right. Let's tap on the side of the hand with your right hand tapping on the left. Okay. And repeat after me and say, I had so much anger. I had so much anger. I was so mad at her. I was so mad at her. I was afraid of her. I was afraid of her. Every single day. Every single day. I didn't know what she would do. I never knew what she was going to do. She was so unpredictable. She was so unpredictable. And scary. And scary. And I had to do what she said. And I had to do what she said. Let's go back up over the heart and say, dear God. Dear God. Take this from me. Take this from me. This terrible fear. This terrible fear. And this whole experience. And this whole experience of having to kill these babies, of having to kill these babies. It was so awful. It was so awful. And I need to understand. And I need to understand that life is eternal. Life is eternal. And in the light of truth. And in the light of truth. These babies are still alive. And these babies are so alive. And they are still in God's loving hands. And they're still in God's loving hands. And I have never altered them. I have never altered them. Because God created life. Because God created life. And life is eternal. And life is eternal. Let's go to the other side of the Robin, chest. Yeah, uh -huh, sure. I have other members streaming. Yeah, yeah. yeah tell me. Pop, pop it out. What do you have? Oh, oh, well, it's just like her rage was so horrible. I mean, the one time I, I, I don't know what grade I was in. Uh, second or third, maybe fourth, uh, and I brought a friend home, not knowing, not realizing. And when uh, the friend came through the door, my mom went into a rage and grabbed him by the hair and started banging his head against the wall. And I was horrified mm -hmm. and ashamed. And, and what? So that's another memory. Just right, so and that's so violent. significant. You know, uh, was there any sense of what? triggered her in Nothing the moment in your other than him being in our house just uh all of a sudden she went off yeah and then uh, what what happened afterward did your what did uh, your he ran say? he, he ran. ran and, and then said, don't ever come back and um and, did, and i did, never brought anyone home again I did never, the two of you ever get to talk about it or did you feel never. like you lost your friend that day 
I lost my friends that day. I lost all my friends that day. Ah, I'm so sorry, Tim. Just so many moments that uh, that we need to address here together, and we're going to. So let's go ahead and tap over the heart. Okay. And let's start with there was a time. There was a time. When I brought a friend over. When I brought a friend over. And I wanted to have friends over. I wanted to have friends. I wasn't sure how it would go. I wasn't sure how it would go. I was hoping for the best. I was hoping for the best. But as soon as they came in. As soon as she came in. My mother flew into a rage. My mother flew into a rage. And she took my friend by the hair. And she took my friend by the hair. And banged his head into a wall. And banged his head into a wall. It was horrific. It was horrific. It was terrifying. It was terrifying. And I couldn't make her stop. I couldn't make her stop. Let's go to the other side of the chest. I release all the sadness. I release all the sadness. All the anger. All the anger. All the shock. All the shock. Of watching her do this. Of watching her do this. I couldn't make her stop. I couldn't make her stop. Holy Spirit. <laughs> take, Holy Spirit. Take this from me. Take this from me. This terrible image. This terrible image. Of watching this happen. Of watching this happen. Feeling so bad for my friend. Feeling so bad for my friend. And there was nothing I could do. Nothing I could do. Please fill my heart. Please fill my heart. And replace this with your peace. And replace this with your peace. Let's pause and take a breath. Very good. And... I know at first they might all start streaming up and let's just grab them as they come mm -hmm. up. What we'll find is as we work together over time, they'll become more isolated. And then pretty soon you'll feel like, not like those things were okay, but you'll feel like the emotions are more neutralized so that they can be looked at individually. Mm -hmm. So take another deep breath. And now we're going to do a, a separate round on just that feeling of loss of friends. Would that be okay? Yes. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead and tap on the side of the hand here okay. and say, it was a tragic day. It was a tragic day. Because I lost all of my friends. I lost all of my friends. Word got around fast. Word got around fast. And there was nothing I could do about it. Nothing I could do about it. And it was so sad. And it was so sad. So uncontrollable. And so uncontrollable. Let's go back up over the heart and say, dear God. Dear God. I feel like I lost my friends that day. I feel like I lost my friends that day. And it seemed like I never got them back. I never got them back. But I want to see all of this differently. And I want to see all of this differently. I give you this whole situation. I give you this whole situation. That you would take it from me. That you would take it from me. And replace it with your peace. And replace it with your peace. Let's pause and take a breath. Just notice what's happening. How's your spine feeling? Are you feeling Actually loosening up, Rob. Good. It's amazing. So just gently, you know, uh, move a little bit, but without uh, hurting yourself, of course. But just kind of yeah. checking in on your spine and giving yourself permission to let that go out of your mm -hmm. spine. Let's just take a moment and see a beautiful light, almost like a probe going through your body, down through the spine and just sending it out and through into the earth where it just disappears and just releasing and letting go of everything that's being held back in the spine. Take another deep, calming breath. When you think about that situation with your friend and them getting their head put into the wall, what's occurring to you right now that's that uh, is still right there at the top Ooh. of your mind? Uh, relief, actually, Roman. I'm just uh, this wasn't about me. And what do you think it was about? Oh, uh, my mother was crazy. And uh, you and tell me more. My mother was crazy because uh, I God only knows what was going through her head. Uh, um, uh, just not safe, and uh, had to avoid her as much as possible. And um, 
did it Got did it. it feel like it was about you before meaning like your fault? I think so that I had a crazy mother and I'm you know and she tried to kill herself all the time and that it, there was something wrong with me. And I, I don't think I think that consciously, mm -hmm. but I think in my vault or in my back, I think there's that, that connection with her. Right. Know, I've had depression most of my life too. And a period of time. You, you know, know, as a kid, when we have a parent that is emotionally challenged or depressed or doesn't, know how to cope with those daily situations like a friend coming to the house it's so easy to take it on tim you know this and it's so mm -hmm. easy to take it on as a kid and decide that we are the ones that are inadequate to help when it really wasn't right. yours to solve it was kind of yours to survive at this time you know mm -hmm. so let's just be willing to look at that and let's turn her over to god together and know that it's between her and God to work all this out, even in spirit, for her to be taught, for her to be healed, for all of that healing to occur, that that is not for you to carry, Tim. Would that be okay? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Let's um, start at the top of the head and tapping there. And let's begin with, I am willing. I am willing. To turn my mother over to God. To turn my mother over to God. And let the healing happen there. And let the healing happen there. It is not up to me to heal her. It is not up to me to heal her. My part is forgiveness. My part is forgiveness. And this is something I am willing to do. And this is something I am willing to do. To do. Let's pause. And I'm using those words because we've talked before and you've given mm -hmm. me that invitation. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I would certainly pause and ask. But I know it is your greatest heart's mm -hmm. desire to be able to forgive her for Absolutely. all of these things. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Release, her, release myself. So let's just pause for a moment to pray about this. And dear God, we come to you today with all these things that Tim has gone through and especially with his mom. And it would be so easy to harbor such hostile judgments against her and feel that she is the root of the cost of pain in his life. And we're just willing together to forgive her on Tim's behalf. We're not condoning what she did. We are forgiving her because we understand that, God, what you created in Tim cannot be altered. It can never, ever be taken away. And the worthiness that is in him that you created there cannot be interrupted. It cannot be taken from him. So we can forgive this woman as those of us that are participating and listening. We can join Tim in this forgiveness of this woman because she does not have the power to take away what you, God, have given your holy son, Tim. So today yes. we're willing to turn her over and put her in the hands of the Holy Spirit. We have learned that the Holy Spirit is the healer and that our part is forgiveness. So let's do a nice round on forgiveness. And I know okay. for some people listening, it might be like, how could we possibly forgive her? Remember that we're not forgiving the action. We are forgiving the idea that Tim can actually be altered by her actions. And if we will forgive that idea, he can actually reset back to his true and whole self. What were you going to say, yeah. Tim? I, I was just realizing that um, uh, one of the gifts I think I had, uh, having uh, learned from her, uh, was compassion. When I did hospital work, they used to give me the worst, worst clients. I mean, fearful clients that would, you know, rage at all the interns or the doctors. And so they, when I had the rounds, I had, I had those clients and I was fairly successful with them. I think because I had compassion. Right. And, and you, uh, you know, you probably weren't uh, really shaken by that. That was everyday yeah, life for you, normal. right? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> what else is new? You so know, it's I'm nice. It could be used for something, wait you know, for them to calm down. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's how I, I feel. Tried, he said that uh, the <laughs> other day, he said, well, I want to warn you, uh, we tried to give her a, an injection to calm her down, and she took the needle and tried to stab the nurse. So would oh. you please go in and see her? <laughs> she took the needle and tried to stab the nurse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, God bless our caretakers, right? Yes, God bless yes, our medical exactly. people, what they must go through every day. Oh, my goodness. So, 
if yeah. we, uh, as we hold in our heart today, just think about your mom there in front of you. And mm -hmm. if you were to look into her eyes, if that feels safe for you, if mm -hmm. you were, does she, tormented. is she looking down? Is she looking away? Is she looking at she, you? She looks tormented. Aww. Like absolute. And if you could uh, in your heart, ask her what she wants to say, what do you think she would say to you right now? Um, in her highest self, um, please don't take my shame and my torment and my rage personally. And it's not about you. It's about my past. And I, that's beautiful. I'm kind of curious about her lower self. What does she want to say just um, heart to heart? I'm, I'm helpless. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm scared. I'm, uh, I'm just, uh, uh, just striking out. Uh, the way I was abused growing up. Right. I just don't know what else to do. Can you ask her in your heart if she would be willing to receive <laughs> your forgiveness today? <laughs> ask myself in my heart. If ask I'm her in your I'll heart. Ask her in her heart. Would she be willing um, to receive that today? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, actually, it's comforting. All right, let's tap over the heart. And let's say, I am willing. I am willing. To offer my mother forgiveness. To offer my mother forgiveness. We went through so much together. We went through so much together. And there is more to release. And there is more to release. Some of those moments were excruciating. Some of those moments were excruciating. But I am learning. But I am learning. That nothing of this earth can take what God has given me. Nothing in this earth, from this earth, can take what God has given me. And so I will forgive this woman. <laughs> and so I will forgive this woman. Called my this, mother. This, this woman called, called my, my mother. mother, right? So other side of the yes, chest. Exactly. Exactly. And for myself. Right. Did, all did you used to call yeah. her mom or mother, mama? I, I did call her mom. Okay. <laughs> so let's just say I forgive you, mom. I forgive you, mom. For every mistake you made. For every mistake you made. I'm willing to consider. I'm willing to consider. That you felt helpless. That you felt helpless. And scared. And scared. And you were striking out. And you were striking out. And maybe you were abused yourself. And maybe you were abused yourself. And I'm willing to forgive you. I'm willing to forgive you. And release you from the past. And release you from the past. Let's go to the middle of the chest. I call upon the Holy Spirit. I call upon the Holy Spirit. To heal my heart. To heal my heart. To reset my mind. To reset my mind. To heal every hurt and pain. To heal every hurt and pain. So I can get my life back. So I can get my life back. And get my happiness back. And get my happiness back. I want to be happy. I want to be happy. And I'm willing to have happiness. And I'm willing to have happiness. Take a deep breath. Robin, I'm only saying this because it's coming up sure. pretty strong. What do you have? Uh, it just said. I, I realized my mother was abused because uh, uh, when she put us on the bus, I mean, I'm six and my sister's four. She, the last thing she said was, don't let anyone stick their fingers in your butthole or in your sister's butthole. And I was shocked. I said, where are you sent? I mean, I'm thinking, where are we going if that's the fear you had? So um, where and where were you going on the bus? Uh, on the bus down to Florida to be with my grandparents, oh, which is where most of my mother's family was on Olson. So that might have been a little clue about something that went on for her? Yes. Aww. Yes. God bless her. Mm. Yeah. All right. So was that the so, first time that you kind of put that together that maybe that yeah, happened to her? I think, yeah, I think that's, Maybe she's also yeah. communicating that to you a little bit. Aww. Yeah. Well, we can, because we're all one, we can actually mm -hmm. help to release her hurt mm -hmm. and fear around that right through you. Is that okay? Right. Okay. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and tap on the eyebrow point, tapping right there, okay. and say, I'm releasing all the fear. I'm releasing all the fear. And all the shock. And all the shock. That my mother must have felt. That my mother must have felt. 
at the hand of this person at the hand of this person that abused her that abused her i am willing to consider i am willing to consider that she was carrying this pain that she was carrying this pain and projecting it outward and projecting it outward trying to get rid of it trying to get rid of it let's go to the side of the eye i'm willing to release all this pain i'm really willing to release all this pain and all the fear and all the fear of carrying this burden of carrying this burden where someone older than you for someone older than you does something of abuse does something of abuse and breaches all trust and breaches all trust let's go under the eye on the cheek point there and just say dear god dear god please take this from my mother please take this from my mother this terrible memory this terrible memory it might be one of the reasons it might be one of the reasons that she was acting out on me that she was acting out on me we release the past today we release the past today on her behalf on her behalf and we are released and we are released take a deep breath just releasing and letting go and if you look yes. at her right now what she doing if you look at her in your heart in your mind I don't know why but she's got her hands over her face. I think she's still in the shame. Uh, well let's take a moment and let's uh first talk to her. I always like to talk to the conscious mind first. So mm -hmm. um and we don't need to use her name here, but Tim's mom, sure. we just come to you today and we stand around you in perfect love. We stand around in understanding and compassion and we call upon you to let this burden be undone in your heart that if you ever went through something so tragic that you would let God take this from you and clean it from your mind. And we stand around you with such great love and we're willing to see you as the holy, light, innocent being that God created you to be. And we know that you were not aware of this in this life experience that you had with Tim, but we call upon you to be willing to be aware of that now and to let that burden be lifted from your heart that you have never been anything less than what God created you to be and holy spirit we ask that you would accomplish the healing for Tim's mom and for Tim that if there is any family line thing going on where the the abuse has been handed down to where Tim has been that recipient that we would let this whole family line be healed here today where the light of love would shine in the place of any form of darkness and in the name of Jesus Christ himself he's rolled away that stone he knows what it's like to completely release and let go of what cannot stop us and we stand here in resurrection that we are the holy son of god and we are worthy of a happy life we are worthy of everything good Holy Spirit, please lift this from us today and help us to reach towards your hand and bring to us that happy life that is the will of God for us. Amen. Amen. See how your mom's doing right now? Is she still yeah. covering her face? Yeah, she's yeah, hands are from her face and uh, uh, she's just sitting quietly. If you were to ask her what she needs, and we're going to get right back to you, but is there anything else she needs right now, or does she just want to sit with that a little? Is there something we can do to I, help her? I think she feels relieved that she's been forgiven and um, and that she can grieve her own losses without acting out, and, uh, that she can... Um, be at peace. I think she's really well. Let's take a moment and all of us together we can usher your mom right into the light of God. You know, sometimes we hover in this illusion that we live in, right? We hover because we have grievances and we feel bad and we have guilt and regrets. And, and we just call to your mom today that she would take her place in heaven, that she would let the angels just lift her up right into that beautiful place of light and that she would hold that door open for the rest of us because we're right there behind her and that she would choose this time to release herself 
because she can certainly serve the greater plan much greater mm -hmm. by taking her place in the light. Does that seem Absolutely. okay? Absolutely. And, and she's also saying, I'm, I'm, uh, she's making amends. She's so sorry that I had to carry her grief and that I don't have to do that anymore. Would you take a moment before she takes her place in the light and just let her uh, hug you? Does that feel okay? Just imagining uh, her. Yeah. Does that feel Very right? Just taking a moment uh, to see if you can get in touch with that. I'm in touch with grief. Yeah. <laughs> Just feeling that motherly love around you, Tim. And I know you didn't get much of that, but maybe you can feel hers or feel mine. Mm -hmm. Or every every mom that's on the line right now that we could send mm -hmm. our motherly love right to you. And even if you didn't experience it before, that you could feel it now. That you would feel safety. And yes. you would feel someone that's looking out for you uh, instead Jesus. of out to get you. Uh, you know? Right. Right. Tap over your heart and just say, I release all this grief. I release all this grief. There was so much to carry. There was so much to carry. Maybe I'm carrying it in my back. Maybe I'm carrying it in my back. But I have no need to do this. But I have no need to do this. I can turn it over now. I can turn it over now. And let this motherly love. And let this motherly love. Flood my body flood my body and lift me up and lift me up and strengthen my spine and strengthen my spine let's go to the other side of the chest i release all the grief uh, i release all the grief of not having a mother of not having a mother. i didn't mother. have anyone to go to i didn't have anyone to go to i didn't have a safe place i didn't have a safe place and i had to survive that and I had to survive that. I must have been pretty strong. I must have been pretty strong. I'm willing to keep that strength. I'm willing to keep that strength. And add in my forgiveness. And add in my forgiveness. And welcome all the love that I missed. And welcome all the love that I missed. So I can catch up right now. And I can catch up right now. Take a big breath. Just imagining that motherly love that you may not have known, but just welcoming it, welcoming the tenderness of that motherly love that comes with unconditional love, wisdom, watching out for you, watching over you, making sure you have your favorite meal, taking care of those birthdays, right? The things moms do. Yes. Making sure that you're dressed and clean and your hair's combed and you're ready for each day. Mm -hmm. I want you to just imagine having received that and just bring mm -hmm. that to your heart. And yeah. we offer that forgiveness to her that she wasn't able to provide that. Um, but we understand that you cannot be altered by her actions or words. It certainly wasn't pleasant. I'm sure it was pretty harsh and horrible, in fact, but it's not the truth of you and it's not the truth of her. And so we yes. can reclaim our true self right here, right now. Yes. Just take another deep, relaxing breath and see what's coming up right now when you just think about her or think about the baby rats or mm -hmm. the friend. Is there anything that's before we close here today? Like mm -hmm. what's what's right there? on the edge that we uh, could work with? Um, uh, just just peace. This is about the eight-year-old boy. I realize there's other things in adolescence, but this is about eight years old, and I, I completely forgive him. I see him being loved and nurtured and cared for and, um, and, and, and blessed. Hmm. Blessed. It's interesting. Um, I feel blessed, Robin. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Tim. And you know, when uh, we still have a few more minutes here, I just want to go uh, checking in just if there's anything, even something coming up. You know, I think you said you are scheduled for some kind of yes, surgery or a, checkup. What's what's two happening? Two surgeries there? coming. Two surgeries um, coming. Yeah, for my neck and lower back. That's where they're trying to, I guess, reconstruct some of the spine. 
Okay. And, uh, and then you said earlier that the anger you were feeling or in touch with was about yeah, a seven or an eight. It. How is it? You don't yeah. feel it right now? Oh, zero. Zero. I don't, I yes. don't feel anything <laughs> in my spine right now, which is beautiful. That's awesome. I, I haven't gotten up the walk, but <laughs> actually, uh, I do have more, more. Oh, I just picked up the pen. That's good. I have more feeling in my hands too, which has been another problem. I'm yeah. Even, that's what I'm excited sense. about. Oh, that's yeah, so great. Yeah. So Tim no, is uh, his seven or eight and anger is now down to a zero yes, and zero. he's able to have a little more mobility with his fingers. And, yeah. you know, our goal is to just help him to get back to this place no. of peace in his body. Yes, Tim. Yeah. I just stood up and I'm at peace standing here. Ah. Looking at the beautiful mountains here. So yeah. you're standing up. That's good. I guess mm -hmm. there was a few days there where you couldn't stand up at I, all. Right. Well, without, without wobbling without wobbling how are you yeah, now are you wobbling one side, i go over okay we'll just take a so nice thank god for narrow hallways you just go hide my, side my, to side my, right my rails <laughs> your rails that's all you need walls right uh exactly. well, you know dear god we just hold this place for tim that as he goes towards whatever treatment would be helpful for him because we want to get the fear down and the peace up in the quickest possible way and we know that Holy Spirit has a plan for him that will help him to get back to his peace as quickly as possible. And we're going to place these treatments and the evaluation. And if there are surgeries involved and people involved, we just place all of that in the highest and most holy place right there in the hands of Holy Spirit. And uh, Tim, let's go ahead and tap over your heart. Are you are you seated? Okay. You okay to tap? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm sitting back down, yes. So we're going to borrow on lesson 194 in A Course in Miracles and say, I place my future in the hands of God. I place my future in the hands of God. I am willing to have miracles. I am willing to have miracles. I am entitled to have miracles. I am entitled to have miracles. I am God's holy, precious son. I am God's holy, precious son. And I am willing to have extraordinary healing. And I am willing to have extraordinary healing. And leave behind every grievance. And leave behind every grievance. Let's go to the other side of the chest. I welcome the happy outcome. I welcome the happy outcome. I am willing to have remarkable healing. I am willing to have remarkable healing. I don't even need to know why. I don't even need to know why. <laughs> I'm willing to expect only greatness. I am willing to expect only greatness. Excellent. Let's go to the middle of the chest. I am willing. I am willing. To let God hold me up. To let God hold me up. And if I ever wobble. And if I ever wobble. That his angels will catch me. And his angels will catch me. And reinforce me. And reinforce me. And steady my steps. And steady my steps. I am willing to be in those hands. I'm willing and I turn myself over to those hands. That always keep me safe. That always keep me safe. God only sends me angels. God only sends me <laughs> steady angels. Let's take a deep breath. That is so awesome, Tim. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling great. Thank you. I'm, I'm exhausted. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we... We are set. We got that anger down and thank you're able you. to stand up a little without the wobble. Yes. Right? So yes. that's good. Yes, thank you. So well, Tim, much. God bless you. And oh. you have all of our heart, our hearts with you today. Oh, and and you. I hope everyone here, you'll say a little prayer for Tim in the next few days as he gets ready for this next step in his life. Mm -hmm. And we'll get back together again because, you know, the vault still has whatever it has. And of course we could mm -hmm. release it all at once, but sometimes we're not even aware it's there. Mm -hmm. You know, one the thing layers. comes up just like when we were working earlier, you know, we were talking about this and then that comes up. And so we, I would love to do another session or two with you, Tim, and just oh. see what's there and let's just keep unloading that vault because you. everyone here can benefit me too so you. if you're a Thank willing you so trooper much. then we'll get back here and do this again together okay all right good, good. god Thank bless you, you so and much. have a beautiful Thank you everyone for your support that is so awesome thank you tim for all signing right. off bye-bye bye-bye Thank you everyone for joining me today. It's been so great to have you here. 
we this is the first time that I've done this live online healing with the guidance of wonderful Holy Spirit and the presence of Jesus himself, that his hand would be involved in every way. So I just thank you and that you would borrow any part of this to let yourself forgive and release the past, because as we drag that past around with us, things can get very, very heavy. And if we are willing to turn it over and give it to God, this is where we can make room for extraordinary healing. Uh, if you'd like to check out more information, we have some great things going on at miraclesforliving.com. I have an eight-week series coming up on uh, EFT with the source technique on trauma and PTSD. And we will be going to these uh, very deep places that many people have been through for healing and relief. We'll be doing that in an eight-week series for deep inner healing. There's also a 112-card EFT library. on. Uh, it has 112 topics so that you can just whip out one of those EFT cards if you don't quite know what to say, those cards will guide you. And there's some samples there as well to see if that suits you. But thank you for joining us today. I look forward to doing more of these. If you like this kind of program, uh, be sure and let me know. And uh, your support is always welcomed. Thank you and God bless you all. Bye for now.